Swadhi Kap. My name is Dr. Arun Upneja, Dean of the School of Hospitality Administration, or Shaw, at Boston University. On behalf of BU, a warm welcome and happy Sankran to everyone watching. Today, I'm excited to have a conversation with two BU graduates, a mother and son, Kun Patara Silaon and Vitun Silaon. Both have had an impressive career, and I'll touch on just some of the highlights here, and then we will talk to them. Kun Patara graduate of Questrom 64, is founder and current chair of the board of directors of SNP Syndicate Public Company Limited, a holding company for a series of restaurants and baked goods stores. It has more than 547 outlets and is the world's largest group of full service Thai restaurants. It is Thailand's leading baker of traditional Chinese mooncakes. Originally established in 1973 as an ice cream shop, the company has grown. I really enjoyed visiting the bakery on my last visit to Thailand. And as someone with a sweet tooth, it was truly a delight. Her son, Vitun Silaon, Shah 90, is chief executive officer and member of the board of directors. He became CEO in 2018. In addition to Shah, he attended St. Edward's School in Oxford, England, and earned an MBA from UNC Chapel Hill. Key brands of the holding company s and include Patara Fine Cuisine, Patio, Omenchan, Maison, Set Bakery, Grand Seaside, Blue Cup Coffee, HQ s and Cafe, and many more. Not just in Thailand, but s and has 18 restaurants located outside of Thailand, including seven Patara restaurants in the United Kingdom. Please help me welcome Kun Patara and Vitun. So, good evening, um, hello, good evening. <laughs> so, um, one thing that we want to do, we want to get to know both of you. So, Kun Patar, when you were growing up, did you think that you were going to go into the family business? What did you want to do? I, I can't remember. It's been a long time. <laughs> and, uh, but I, 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 I like to, to play with, uh, to play you know, like uh, sell things. Like when I was young, I used to take my father's uh, van and put some pineapples and then went to the market to sell. You know, I, I was like, like a business, business girl, very young. Yeah. Had a very <laughs> so you, you had a business mind right from day one and that actually, but actually showed up in the they, my father is a businessman, so I think right. I've footsteps. Fantastic. So, um, you know, you had a choice all over the world. You could go anywhere. How did you end up choosing Boston University? Actually, I, I went to uh, high school in Switzerland. And after that, I went to Boston because my father had a, a, a friend in, in the States, American friend. And his daughter went to Boston. Actually, it was Pine Manor Junior College. So I went to Pine Manor for two years. And after that, I went on to BU. That, that's why, why I, was, I went to oh, BU. Oh, great. Yeah, I know Pine Manor is in Newton. But I was in that area. Okay, fantastic. So what did you study at BU? Um, and how was your experience? Like, did you enjoy it? Uh, to a college of uh, business at okay. that time it was called CBA, uh -huh. and I, I graduated in 1964, which is a long time ago. Come to think of it, 55 <laughs> years ago. No, no, 55 years ago. Mm -hmm. 55, 56 okay. years ago. Yeah, 57. So that's great. That was a long time ago. Um, uh, I know it is a long time because I was. <laughs> but actually, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I went to BU because there, there were a lot of Thai students there. Actually, we, we had a quite a large Thai community there in Boston. Uh, so I, I I have a lot of friends still here back uh, in Thailand. So you felt at home at the university then? Yes, yes. Because I, I was uh, uh, not a little girl anymore. So <laughs> I enjoyed myself in Boston. 
while some people might be interested in knowing what exactly you did, but we're going to skip that part. And um, so <laughs> I'm, assuming, <laughs> I'm assuming you really enjoyed. So then I want to find out what happened after you finished college and you did you go back to Thailand and how did you enter the business? Well, I came back and I went to uh, into government, uh, National Economic Development Board for two two years, and I, I think I, I I I didn't like it, so I left and I started my own business, selling clothes, selling shoes, <laughs> and after that, my sister asked me if we want to open a small ice cream shop. Because at that time, I had three sons already. I was married with three sons. He was, was about five. five. He was, was five. five. So my, my younger sister, unfortunately, she passed away already. And she's 10 years younger. But she said, oh, we should open an ice cream parlor together. So we found a small place and then we opened ice cream shop called s and Ice Cream Corner. But we didn't sell only ice cream because it, I like to eat. And so we put in a short menu and it became very popular because there were like four young ladies uh, graduated from abroad running this small shop. <laughs> so all, the, uh, all our friends came by. It was we, a trendy we, place. Yes, it, it was, was a trendy, trendy and we were quite popular. So we opened more and more, and now here we are. Wow. So that is so impressive. You are married, you're running a family, you have three boys, um, and most likely they were, you know, just looking at Vitu, and I can see that he was. Uh, a very naughty kid. And so so you have three boys who are running wild all over the place and you had time to open an ice cream shop. That is amazing. I, I didn't do it alone, you see. I had my sister and brothers and sisters in law. So we all we all work together. I can I can imagine but it must have been a lot of fight. Fun. We didn't fight. We oh, got along well. That that's how we, we came this. <laughs> so let's uh, switch and talk to Vitoon for, for a few minutes. Uh, Vitoon, you had your school in England and then you went yes. to college. So I was 10 uh, over 10. <laughs> you were 10 years old when you went to college, when you went to school in England? How old, no, no, no. <laughs> <To England. laughs> How old were you when you went to England? 10. I was 10. 10. Okay. When Public school and then over to Boston after after wow. England. So um, one question I have is uh, again you also you went to England and then you had choice of going anywhere in the world, but you chose the United States and you chose BU. How important was it to come to BU given that your mom had come here? It, it was uh, I had I had actually I had two schools that I was accepted to USC for architecture and, and, and BU. And I thought hard about it, but then, uh, you know, my mom so it was alma mater, so, so, so I had to, you know, it, it uh, and, and Boston is a little bit closer in, in climate to England, it rains a lot. <laughs> so, but, so, so, so I, you know, I, I, I guess I felt more comfortable there. I'm having, uh, you know, my mom graduating from there and then, and uh, the weather and everything is similar to England. So. Fantastic. Now, Vitun, I am very, very curious to know. Um, you graduated in 1990, so you obviously joined yeah. in 1986. Shaw, sure, the School of Hospitality. 80, was 86 or 86. Shaw was only formed in 1981, so it was only five years old. Most yes. people at BU did not know about this school. I mean, it was a small program in Med. How did you find Shaw? How did you end up enrolling in this school? I, I actually, I, 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 I did not enroll at first in, in, in Med. I, I came in as an econ um, 
uh, major. And then I looked around because I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And then um, I found that there was a hotel and food administration program. So and it seemed to fit the family business. So I, I you know, and I, I like food. Uh, so so it, it, was, it was something that I wanted to, to try and do. Fantastic. Now, Vitun, I have to tell you, all our courses have the, you know, all our courses have this HF um, hotel and food next to it. So HF 120, HF. And most people at even at Shaw, current students don't know what HF stands for. And you just gave gave it away. You said hotel and food. That's that's exactly what it was. So Vitun, what was your favorite memory of the time you spent at BU? <laughs> that was quite a lot. Well, it's quite a while ago, but then uh, I remember walking into class in the deep snow. That was, that was, uh, I don't know, that was a favorite memory. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, you know, it was a, it was a memory that I, I remembered uh, well. Um, I also, there was one, one thing, uh, the dean at the time, I, sorry, I couldn't remember the name. And uh, at the, uh, uh, the beginning of, of the year, she she asked everybody to to tell her uh, your name in the class, and afterwards she recited all the, the people's names, uh, and and it was a very good good lesson for the hospitality business, remembering the people's names, remembering your customers' names. It's very important. So. So it's, it, it was a very good experience, very good lesson uh, that day. Uh, but do, by any chance, was that Denise Dupre? Yeah, yeah, Denise, yeah. Yes, yes, Denise, yes. Is she, is she still around? Or? So she left BU many, many years ago, and she runs a group of hotels and some wineries in France. And um, I've had a few meetings with her and recently she joined our advisory board. So I will be very happy to let her know that of the two memories you mentioned, trudging in snow, going to classes and her first day experience where she remembered everyone's name. Those are the two memories she'll be tickled and she'll be very happy to hear that. So thank you for, for hey, saying that. Hey, I give my regards. Sir. Definitely. And so I'm gonna ask the same question to Kun Patara. I know it was, a long time ago, but do you have what? What is your favorite memory that still remains of BU? I don't remember anything. I only remember when it snowed. I don't go to school. <laughs> <laughs> now we because, might. Huh? We might be editing that part out of our interview. <laughs> when students don't hear that. Cold. <laughs> So uh, Kun Patara, let's now go back. You go back to, and you, have, you, are, you work for the government and then you start this ice cream shop with no, your, with your well, sister. With but after I got, got married and with three sons, right. I, I started this uh, SNP. So can you talk a little bit about how SNP evolved from that ice cream shop to that big conglomerate it is now? Yeah. Actually, we didn't sell ice cream only at first. You know, I added some short orders, and, and later on, about four years later, we added the bakery, bakery section. Because at first, we didn't have a baker, and we didn't know how to bake. But on, on, uh, after four years, we found a baker. We stole him from another bakery. <laughs> And then we started the bakery. Actually, when we started the bakery upstairs on, on, in, in, in our shop upstairs, and uh, we, we couldn't sell all of the bakery we baked in one place. So that started us to expand. So we found another bakery in, in, a, in a shopping area. That, that's how, the, the first time we, we expanded. And later on, we added another restaurant, another restaurant, another restaurant, and now we have 500. <laughs> no, wow. we only 
hundred something no, restaurants. Hundred and forty restaurants and the rest are the rest bakery. are bakery shops. So hundred and forty restaurants and okay. Very good. And so somewhere around four hundred and seven bakeries then. So bakery bakery was uh, the popular um, mm -hmm. item and, and we we uh, you know we expanded that a lot. Uh, and and we, we actually went public in nineteen eighty nine. So mm. we, we got some we got some funds and to we, expand. We have to thank uh, Disney cartoon characters because uh, uh, then they, we didn't have to. Uh, uh, they they didn't have licensing yet uh, at that time. Yeah. So, we, so we made the cartoon cakes and that was we were the that first, made our first, yeah, we were the first to popular. make <laughs> to make Mickey Mouse cakes. <laughs> So that's why now we're the, the biggest uh, birthday cake in Mika. Uh, very good. So, um, Vitoon, when you finished your college here, so tell us how did you enter the business? Did you do something else or did you go right into the company and started working? So, what uh, was, trace your career a little bit? Um, well, I was always um, around, in and around the business, uh, not, not working in it. Uh, let's say, but then uh, at five, I was eat, already eating in in the restaurant, uh, and and uh, I was always in and around and know the people. Um, um, but after graduating, I went to um, I joined the military for a while in the army, and and uh, and then also I went and worked at the Oriental Hotel to learn about uh, service, how how they. How they became one of the great hotels in, in the world. Um, and after that, I went for an MBA uh, at uh, UNC and then came back to work at uh, uh, Procter & Gamble, Thailand. So I learned about branding, you know, uh, how to manage brands and things like that. Before joining uh, s and in, in 2000, so, so I'm with S and P about 20, 21 years now. Excellent. And after he started the coffee, the coffee brand well, blew up cup in, in, in S and P because before we just use other people's coffee, but we do he, he wanted our own coffee brand. So he. So 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 you know we just started, started a, a, a brand because. Cup. Because because uh, S and P is known S and P strength that the brand uh, is known for Thai food and, and cakes bakery, so starting a coffee would would really uh, complement you know it, the product would complement, but then the uh, the brand would would uh, be not so meaningful if, if it was S and P coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, so we wanted to another name for, for the coffee so that we can build the, the coffee separately. So do you sell the coffee also? So do people buy just coffee powder as well or only come and drink the coffee um, at the big? Uh, we, we, we sell the coffee in, in store uh, as well. Okay. I mean, not, not the coffee beans. Okay. We, we, um, it's, it's like a coffee bar, a special bar. Okay. okay, very good. So we do a lot of takeaway. And some people come just for the coffee and, and not for the food or the cakes. So it depends on the customer. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, so let's uh, talk um, a little bit about what happened in 2000, uh, 2020. Now, you took over as the CEO in 2019. 20, 2019. 2019. And immediately right after that in a few months time we have the coronavirus <laughs> pandemic how did that disrupt your business uh actually a year before i i became ceo um i i went to a class uh uh like a short course um uh, about disruption uh, in Stanford, in uh, Stanford, they had a, a short course about disruption, and you get to go and see all the digital startup. And so, so I was learning before disrupt about with disruption before that, and 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 everybody knew something was coming, uh, but we never thought it was going to be like uh, like a health 
pandemic. Uh, um, and we, we were, before that, a couple of years, we were trying to change the company to, to, to grow, to, to grow differently because we were growing the same way the last uh, maybe 15, 20 years, just growing outlets. Um, and, and, and we got to the point that it got kind of stuck where we, as, uh, you can't find a place to open to, to, to add more to the system. We've got, we've got about 500 already. So, so we're trying to find new ways or new business or new you know, things that we can do to, to expand, to disrupt the business and make it more profitable also. Um, and, and, and then, and then we couldn't really find or make anything work until the coronavirus came. Right. Uh, at the end of 1919, uh, uh, 2019. Um, and then it actually forces us to, to change very quickly. Because I remember at the beginning of 2020, we thought that year was going to be a great year, and then Corona came. And, and, and sales just plummeted. That was one point, it was uh, less than half of the year before. So it was very difficult. And, and we were thinking that maybe, uh, you know, we wouldn't survive. You know, maybe it would be the first year, 2020 would be the first year where we make a loss. Uh, but then we, we, we changed very quickly. Uh, the pandemic disrupted us, but then we disrupted ourselves. We changed uh, very quickly. And then uh, in, 19, uh, in 2020, last year, we, we did came back and we came back and made a profit which was unexpected. Actually, uh, we made the double the profit we were expecting that we were targeting. Uh, so, so, so the pandemic was, is, is something difficult, not was, it's still here uh, very much. Um, and, but, but it's something of uh, a blessing uh, in a way, if you, if, you, if you look at it on the other side of the coin, which is, uh, you know, it makes you, it makes you uh, very afraid and, and have, to, uh, have to do something very drastic to, to make the company uh, more fit to survive. So um, there is a lot to unpack here, um, but I am very curious. So first of all, I have to say that a hallmark of a great leader is someone who is not just going with the flow, but also anticipating what could happen and you were anticipating that disruption can happen anytime and that's why you went for uh, more education on that issue so that's that's very very um, thoughtful and visionary of you but um, i think a lot of people will be interested to know how did you pivot in 2020 to account for the pandemic and the changed business environment you know one third of your outlets are restaurants and again no one can go and eat in them and um, yeah. so what did you do? Please you sort of uh, help everyone understand that. Yes. Well, in the food business, uh, I think everyone, everyone uh, was hit hard uh, in, 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 because nobody can go to the restaurant um, and eat uh, very easily. Uh, but in, in, in our business, we had three main income streams. One is eat in at the restaurant. Two is take away. So people buy bakeries, uh, and three is delivery. So um, takeaway is a very important part of our business. Like like we mentioned before, that we have more bakery outlets than, than restaurants, and bakery uh, are usually takeaway. Um, so so the takeaway business was what helped us uh, a little bit to to survive. But then we need to think about the the eat in business, which is going to, it is uh, very heavily uh, in fixed, uh, it has a lot of fixed costs, uh, namely rent and, 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 and side. Right? The restaurant, the full restaurant would be 20 odd people, bakery shop would be maybe four or five people. So, so there, there's a lot more fixed costs. So, we, we drastically reduced the fixed costs. We closed the restaurants that weren't making profit. Um, a lot of a lot of thing was done uh, in, in managing HR. 
uh, managing the, 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 the labor pool. We had, we had a, a few hundred people taking early uh, retirement, things like that. Um, so, so actually, uh, the, the employees actually did help us a lot as well because we, everybody took a cut of force last year, including uh, the, yes. the, 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 yeah, the, the higher you go, the bigger the cut. Right. So, but but everybody had to make sacrifices uh, last year. So, okay. and uh, at the factory, we we are more agile. We we turned the factory into um, a more agile uh, production environment where where there are not dedicated production lines. We had people where, where we can uh, move people around to different lines where where um, products were needed. And we had to reforecast the whole. The whole um, sales uh, forecast because we had we had a forecast of uh, seven billion something and it ended up being five billion. So you had to you had to um, do a lot of reforecasting and managing the the cost uh, before it actually happens. Uh, and 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 uh, the very important thing is that we boosted our next business uh, which is uh, delivery uh, and we 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 are this year actually we're launching a new um, web app for delivery ordering and also we are opening 30 more what we call delta delivery and takeaway it's like a delivery hub um, so with that we can get closer to the customers to the residential areas some some of the existing bakeries we turn we turn into a delta that we call delivery and takeaway, and some we're opening like new ones, which uh, to get closer to the customers and 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 provide them with the food faster because we know it's harder for them to come to the stores, so we need to get to them. Uh, to Most the people don't come out now; they stay home and they order, so our delivery is doing very well. So th this is uh, very interesting, and I think that um, every business has to pivot the way that it works. It's going to work differently for each uh, business. So it's, it's very interesting to hear um, the way you've pivoted and, and taken care of this. But during the conversation when you were speaking, uh, Kun Patara was whispering some things in her ear. So I want to ask you, I know that Vitun is now the CEO. How involved are you still in the business? Because you seem to know all the details of what's going on. Well, I started. <laughs> I, I don't let go very easily. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> but my, my staff wants to see me around. So I try to go around and you know, let my customers see that I'm still around. And that, 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 that's a way to, uh, to, to, to make them uh, make them uh, feel confident. Uh, the, the, yeah. yeah, more confident that I'm still around and I'm still looking after them. It's it's a family business, and like many Thai businesses, it's a family business. And I think it's a uh, it's very good that that we a lot of times we make big decisions by committee, so it's like a family committee, and we get a lot of inputs from 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 many people before making the, the decision. So I think I think it's a it's, it's a good system and and whatever makes the company move forward in the right direction. And uh, now we have we have a more very able executives yes. who came in time to yeah. to help us. Like at this time, the other thing that I didn't mention was we um, uh, we reorganized the, the team, the executives and the, the, the management team uh, to include my, a lot, my a lot other of new side professionals. Is, is with us also. My, my, my yeah. middle brother, he's, he's also um, uh, looking after, he's the president for, for um, finance and, and production. So, so he's looking after the, yeah. So, but apart so, from a few family members, there's yeah, a lot yeah, of uh, able body uh, professionals. Slow. My, my second son, he went to Boston also, but he went to Sloan. MIT. MIT. MBA. MBA. 
Excellent. He's healthy. He's healthy. Very good. So you mentioned that it's a family business and all of these family are involved. So I'm just very curious to know um, how are you know how is the environment at home? Is it all business business during the dining table? Does your mom grill you on what were the revenues yesterday? What? How do you maintain a distance between business and family then? We eat and sing. Yeah, we try to keep the the business. Well, I mean, you can't avoid it. Sometimes you talk about it, right? But then we try to uh, remind ourselves that, you know, keep the business uh, away from family dining tables. Uh, and, 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 mm-hmm. and actually, we enjoy, we're a family that enjoy good food. So, so sometimes we eat, sometimes we uh, order S&P. <laughs> but, some, but a lot of times we, we cook ourselves. And uh, my mom cooks, my wife cooks, my son cooks. So every, every you know, he a lot cooks. of... I, I, I cook sometimes, but you know, they make a mess. So <laughs> I think when when you do business with pleasure, you can do it very long, you know, much longer. You don't get tired. I think um, the chairman now is more more interested in uh, singing after dinner more <laughs> than talking about the how to rearrange the business. <laughs> but it's she's too but, complicated. But she's still involved. She you know she. He goes and visit the stores and the staff. Yes, I like to go around and, and look at the restaurant. I, I don't like to, to go to the office because they, they go to the office. And she I actually the moves the chairs and tables and <laughs> shelves and everything. <laughs> Very good. I want to pivot back to the business environment for a little bit. Um, you know, uh, the whole world is we are facing another wave of the pandemic and what is your outlook on business going forward? Are we going to be very quickly able to get through this next wave? And what is your outlook for the business for the rest of the year? So the rest of this year? Well, and hopefully. going forward, yeah, and going forward. It's, it's, it's just flat up again in, in, in Bangkok. I don't know we're, you... we're in the midst of third wave. Yeah, so we, we have to probably uh, work from home again. Um, but but looking forward, I mean, you have to you have to live with COVID. Uh, you know, you, you got uh, you got the the uh, we call it the injection uh, uh, vaccines, right? You got the vaccines. You, but then but then you, you you still need to find a way to live to live with COVID for for the next few years anyway. Right. And you need to to um, to change the way you do business, um, uh, but you have to understand the the customers is changing, and they they want more value, they want more convenience. So you got to give it to them. How 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 can we how can we do that? And that's, we're trying to do that with with uh, uh, the delivery, getting more Delta open to get closer to the customers. And we're also opening um, uh, what we call convenience bakery shop. So, so uh, more more value items and easier to find, and of course, uh, good quality as always, um, so that people do trust our brand uh, going forward. Very good. So, Kun Patar, I want to uh, switch to you and ask you. Um, what is the best advice someone has given you, whether in life yes, or in business? My father. <laughs> okay. Nobody gives me advice because <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> I'm very, very confident in myself. But my father is a very good example. So, Honest. okay. Honestly. Very good. The and best quality for to do business. Honestly. You give the best to your customer. Look after your staff. That, that's most important. So Vitun, what have you learned from your mother since she built up this empire from a small store into so many stores? And I, I'm like uh, his <laughs> professor. 
a lot. I, I remember all the names of my stars. <laughs> <laughs> and that's very important. It's, uh, yeah, I've, I've learned a lot, not just from, from, from my mom, but from my dad as well. He's my, my, my dad, he's a professional. He was in, uh, he was at uh, uh, a lot of big conglomerates, including uh, SCG, Sam Cement Group. Um, he was with the he, he was a minister of commerce too, but and so so he's also given me a lot of advice. Um, so I I do learn a lot from from my parents, and I I try to learn from everybody. Uh, you know, from from my staff, my peers, and my yeah. My, we have a big family as well, so we do. I, I talk. I try to network with everybody and try to learn. But but the, the the most important thing to do, I think, for taking the company forward, you have to realize that change is in, inevitable and, and change is 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 moving faster and faster uh, in the new world. So so you need to anticipate and you need to you know, understand what the customers want before they know they want it, <laughs> which is easier said than done. <laughs> So I know that I am keeping Kun Patara from her show. So I have one last question. Very much. I just look at my watch. And I, I know that. Uh, so I have one last question before I will say my ending remarks. But um, I'm going to ask the advice my father gave me. He says, uh, the more you give, the more you will receive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I always give. Very good advice. And I always receive, I don't know why. That, that is very, very good advice. So my last question for Vituna, I'm gonna ask you the same thing, Kun Patara. So do you want to express any gratitude to anyone or anything um, uh, for the success that you've had in life and all the things you've been able to achieve, Vituna? Um, I'd like to thank uh, our people, the S&P people. Um, I've been with, with, with well, I've worked. I've been with S and P all my life, like I said, since I was five. Um, but I've worked with S and P people for 21 years, and they're all very dedicated people, um, and and dedicated to making customers happy, uh, dedicated to making quality food, um, and and giving the best service from the heart. So, so I really want to thank all the S and P people, and that's they are the people who make it. Um, to make what s and is today. We're the family, we're, we're, we're guiding them off. And you know, they, they're the ones that who are making uh, customers happy. And our family members too. And, and our family, and the whole, um, uh, our, actually our, our people, our staff, our customers, I'd like to thank them as well for, for having trust in, in our, our friend, in our policy. Uh, what we deliver, um, and also the, our family and our shareholders, other shareholders, we do a, a public company now who are trusting us to to uh, execute our plans going forward to, to make the company uh, you know last 100, 100 years, more than 100 years, hopefully. Oh, it's 40, 48 years. <laughs> and thank you, Arun. Thank you. Oh, of course. Um, I think uh, we're doing that was very well said. I think the first thing that came to your mind was the people that work in your company. And that is very, very important. And that's the, you know, the, the, the sense that I'm getting all around that, that you're very interested in people. So um, Kun Patara, same question for you. What do you have to be, th who do you want to thank or do you want to express your gratitude to, to for, for this good fortune that you're in? Uh, I, I would like to thank my sister who passed away already. And when we first uh, started the uh, SNP, I chose the name because S is my sister, Sikisida, and P is me. So S and P. So I would like to thank her because she was the one who asked me uh, to open a small ice cream shop with her. Otherwise, I wouldn't because I was I was quite lazy then. <laughs> I wasn't like businesswoman or something or anything but you know she said oh sister why don't we open an 
ice cream shop together. So that's what started as an He was a true entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And I would, I, I would like to thank my sister-in-laws and brothers because they all had the, they were all working very hard with me from the beginning. Very good. Um, I do have to say that it is always so much fun to talk and catch up with both of you. I remember very fondly the warm hospitality when I visited Bangkok three years ago. I you hope you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to come over. I would come. love to come back again. Um, yes, so please. I, I, definitely. So, and I hope uh, everyone listening came away with a sense of excitement that you feel about the industry and you feel about the people and the hope that you have for the future. Thank you, Kwap Kun Krab. Stay safe Absolutely. and healthy. And I hope to meet you again soon in person. Thank you.